Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where we try to make you feel comfortable with your palate and get rid of all that crappy, snobby wine stuff. It's just grape juice. Fermented, of course. But, nonetheless, we want you to feel comfortable about what you drink about your palate, not mine, not Parker, not Tanzer, not anyone else. We want you to be comfortable with what you like. And I'm here to kind of help you look at wines uh, that might be wines that you like, obviously. And we're continuing with the theme of Merlot. This is the uh, third episode I'm doing this week on Merlot. The first two were on Washington State, state I'm from. And I think that some of the best Merlot in the world comes from that state. It has nothing to do with where I live. I, that's just what my palate tells me. But today we're going to move on to California. Um, we're going to move on to some uh, really uh, interesting brands that are real strong value plays. And then another one that steps up into the area where we were with the Washington State Merlots. And of course, after I did this one, I thought, well, you know, maybe I should have thrown in a couple of, you know, lower end Washington Merlots like Columbia Crest and that sort of thing and maybe I'll save another episode for later for that. And as I mentioned uh, on Friday I'm going to do a blind Merlot tasting which ought to be very very interesting so I'm looking forward to that one. And then uh, we might carry the theme a little bit longer because I really have this passion for Merlot only because I think that it is a varietal that has, I said on my first episode that I did on Merlot, that it's much maligned. A lot of people, especially those wine snobs, you know, kind of steer away from Merlot, just like they might, have you ever heard the uh, term ABC, anything but Chardonnay? Well, you know, I'm sorry, but Chardonnay is the number one varietal in the United States, whether you like it or not. It's there. It's probably there to stay. It's been holding its own for a long time. And I'd like to see Merlot climb up the ranks a little bit in people's uh, choice of beverages. So let's get started right away. We're going to start off with a um, label that I think uh, is a great value. It is uh, Oak Grove. And it's, of course, a uh, part of a big portfolio of wines uh, that are available out there. This is a 2000 and... 12 Merlot, California Appalachian, Oak Grove. It rolls in at $8. Now, I've had a lot of success with this label, not because it's like blow you out of the water, right home and tell your mom about it wine, but because of the QPR, quality to price ratio of these wines. Now, I have not tried the 2012 Merlot yet. This will be the first time, so let's see what's on the nose. That's a little challenged. I mean, it's a very light on the nose which you might expect for $8. I'm not saying that you can't get a great nose for $8, but sometimes you have to sacrifice something. And I'm getting a lot of like bright red fruit. I get a little bit of like a, not a wet cardboard mildewy like a cork, but like a fresh cardboard. You know, like, you know, like you, you tear up, tearing up, cardboard box. It's not mildewy. It's not wet like a corked wine would be, but yet you you know what it, you know what cardboard smells like, right? Yeah, of course you do. I get a little tobacco, just a slight hit of tobacco. But it's very light. I mean, there's stuff there, but it's not like, you know, hits you like right off the bat. Get a little tiny hit of cola. Let's see what we get on the palate. <coughs> I 
<coughs> oh. Sorry about that. You know, actually, I, I get like polish a little bit of currants, some cherry elements in there. It's uh, fairly polished on the palate. I get a nice little bit of acidity. There's some tobacco leaf notes that come through on the finish. Finish isn't a super long, but it get a little vanilla action on the back end. I'm sure they use a little bit of oak, probably not, obviously not any new oak, at least for, for, for eight bucks. I would doubt you get any new oak on this. Now there's a little bit of um, minerality on the back side. It's a, it's a lighter style, you know, you know, you don't get a huge plush fruit, but there is good balance to this wine. I don't get a lot of makeup, which I find in some um, some wines in the, you know, the 10 to 20 dollar category. I'm always looking for makeup, which is I don't know how you would describe that, but you know, they do some manipulation on wine. I, you know, I don't know if they do it on this one, but I don't taste it. If they do any manipulation like deacidify, acidify, whatever they do. Um, you know, the color's good on it. Um, I don't know if you can see that. You know, very uh, kind of like a, a burgundy sort of, you know, nice. It's a nice color. The flavors are good. Um, you know, it's eight bucks. It's delicious. It's light. Um, it would definitely, you could have this with a taco or a burger, no problem. Maybe, you know, a cheese pizza. Just don't get too spicy. So I've got all the characteristics of them are low. Get a little grippiness on the back side, which is, you know, quite interesting. Maybe it'll hold up to a stew. You know, I'm going to give this one a C plus, B minus. For eight bucks, okay? Let's put it in perspective. It's eight dollars. And it's good. It's light. I understand that. But you're only spending eight bones. C plus, B minus. No problem. Like that bottle of wine. Good job, Oak Grove, or whoever... You know, I should probably have looked at what portfolio it's under. Actually, I think it's related to this backhouse wine. Not sure of that. I heard that somewhere. There's a whole bunch of wines uh, made under this portfolio. Kind of like Mondavi, Behringer, all those guys. They all have their own thing. So we're doing a little rinse on this. Now we're moving on to the backhouse Merlot. Um, California Appalachian again, vintage 2012. Oak Grove was uh, 2012 also. This rolls in at exactly the same price. This will be interesting. As the Oak Grove. Okay. Let's see what we get on the nose. Put that over there. So this is a little more restrained on the nose, definitely. The only thing I notice on these episodes and you probably see me looking off to the side. I keep looking at my screen and I want to look at the camera. So I'm working on that. Sorry, Matthew, I had to mention that because I watched a couple of my videos and I'm like, what am I looking at? Oh, I'm looking at the screen. You know, my camcorder flips around. So I'm going to look at the camera. You got to practice that. So this back house, uh, Merlot has a a little bit more restrain on the nose than the Oak Grove. Um, I, I, you know, it's funny, but I get that kind of the same the same thing, that fresh cardboard smell. A little bit of currant. A little bit of blackberry, definitely blackberry on the nose. A little bit of maybe like a worn leather, like a really old wallet, you know, that you've had in your pocket forever and you finally, you know, throw it in the, you get a new one, you throw it on your dresser drawer because, you know, hey, maybe we may use it later. At least that's what I am instead of just throwing it in the garbage. You know, it doesn't have any rips or whatever. But anyway, <laughs> that's what, it does with that old wallet syndrome. 
Okay, let's see what we get on the pallet. Very interesting. I'm, I'm really impressed for eight bucks. I mean, this one has a little more depth than the Oak Grove on the back side. You get a little chocolatey sort of leather component going on, which is pretty amazing for eight bucks. Right up front, it kind of is like a bright a chocolate cherry currant thing going on. I am actually very impressed with this wine. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry, but it surprises me. It's got good acidity. It's got chocolate kind of cherry currant thing going on up front. Nice flow across the palate. The acidity kind of lingers in there. I get a little cola action on the back side, uh, you know. I don't get makeup on this one either, which is, you know, and, and I, I'm i kind of sensitive to like, you know, that kind of lipsticky kind of uh, thing that goes on with wines, and you might not notice it, that's okay, you know, it's just a, a thing that I have. Got a little bit of, you know, minerality on the back side, a little grippiness. It's not out of balance. A little brighter than the, um, than the, um, Oak Grove. Eight bucks, though. Uh, I'll admit I do not carry this wine at my store. I don't know if I've had this Merlot. This is, this is one of those moments. <laughs> wine guy going, wow, you know, this You know, I'm going to give this one a B minus, a straight up B minus. Um, it doesn't really show up the Oak Grove in a tremendous way, but the finish is a little deeper, which I appreciate. I don't get the makeup. I don't, you know, I don't know if they de you know acidified this one. Whatever. I don't know that. I don't get any real fakiness out of this wine. I think it's a, you know, it's a little. It's on the brighter side, which makes it even more uh, towards food. You could drink this by itself, obviously. It's not a heavy wine. It's not a super complex wine. But it's only 8 bucks. I'm giving it a B-. minus. It's incredible. I'm impressed. Let's move on to the next one. Two impressive wines for 8 bucks. Come on. Come on. Not what I was expecting. This is the Jason Stevens Estate Merlot 2009 Santa Clara Valley. California, Central Coast. I really like their Zinfandel. It's probably one of I'm a Zin guy. I'm a Zin head. I don't care you guys out there. Zinfandel's good. You know, get over yourselves. This one rolls in at seventeen dollars. So out of the two, we you know double the price. Let's see what we get. So we did a rinse. Already while I was yapping. Let's see what we get on the nose. Definitely more oak. I get a lot of um, licorice. Currents, a little stinky action, just barely, which I like. I, you know, I did an article on my blog, you gotta look it up. Um, Standthewinemind.com about the difference between a wine geek and a wine snob. And there's there's actually a huge difference. Wine geeks, which I put myself in the category of, you know, we just like quirky things about wine. It, it, we don't even, you know, I understand if you don't like 
poopy on your wine. I, I understand. I'm not going to tell you you have to like that. But for some reason, us wine geek guys, and maybe you will fall, maybe you'll fall in that category someday. Hopefully you do, but you don't have to. You'll understand what we're talking about. A lot of tobacco, currants, definitely, you know, I mean, it's double the price. We don't know, now, don't get me wrong, we don't expect double the price to always be better on the nose, but we would hope, we can only hope that it would be better on the nose, and this one is. Get a little dusty component. Let's see what we get on the palate. <laughs> okay. Do you like brown sugar? Because you better. You better. You better want to scoop some brown sugar in your currant juice and just dump it in there, stir it up. Because I'm telling you guys, this is brown sugar and currant juice all the way. And I know there's some of you out there that are going to love this. You guys that love sweet wines, not sweet, fruit forward, big powerful wines, you're going to love this baby. Finishes with tobacco, a little bit of a little bit of minerality on the finish, which is interesting. But <laughs> this baby is, you know, I mean, we use the word sweet, dry. This, some, some. Now, here's the point. Some of you might think this is dry. I think it is like sweet, not like that barefoot sweet red or something like that. But this has got crazy amount of brown sugar. I'm just looking for the alcohol content. Excuse me, just a moment. You know, this is one thing that bugs me about wines is sometimes, oh, ah, 15 too. Could be 16. You see, they have that little, for those of you who don't know, um, when they're, the government allows them to go 1% one way or the other. And of course, they come down rather than go up. The only problem I have with this is it doesn't taste like a Merlot. This could actually go almost go in the Zinfandel section. It is big, it's powerful. It's got a lot of fruit, a lot of that brown sugar element underneath the uh, currants. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of you who like it. It's 17 bucks. I'm going to go CC plus on that. I'm going to CC plus on that. Only because you're not expecting that out of a Merlot. But I know some of you are going to like it. If you like those fruit forward, big, powerful wines, this is for you. Hard to believe. Hard to believe the two $8 babies came in ahead of the $17 wine. I, I, but that being said, some of you guys are going to like this wine if you like that big fruit forward style. You're going to like it. Not my cup of tea. I want to see more structure, less alcohol in my Merlot, but you know, that's me. If you don't like that, knock yourself out, buy it. But these two $8 babies, I think they show a lot of good goodness for the dollar. Here's to keeping on the snob out of wine. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next episode.